Hello vegan adventurers, welcome to another exciting vlog from El Chaltén, Argentina. Today we're gonna be hiking to Loma del Plegue Tumbado Hill. On this hike we should be able to see both Fitzroy and Cerro Torre, but again it looks like the weather is quite cloudy. And we also have to move first to another apartment because this accommodation doesn't have free rooms anymore. So it's around 10 o'clock in the morning and it's time to get started. Our next accommodation was at the beginning of the trail to Laguna Torre. So this is where we finished our loop uh, Fitzroy Cerro Torre. So make sure you check out that hike on this channel. It was the most adventurous hikes in our lives. So this trek starts at the National Park Visitor Center, so you have to cross Rio Fitzroy over the bridge and from this place you can also go to Mirador de los Condores and Mirador de las Aguilas, which we did on the first day in El Chaltén. It's a short hike, takes around 2 to 3 hours and to Loma del Plegue Tombado we have around 10 kilometers. There's also a long distance hike to Laguna Toro and Paso del Viento, which actually can be done as a loop and it would take like 5 days and for that you need to register and you would also need a special equipment for a zipline or cross the river. So we asked at the National Park Visitor Center about the weather today and they say it's gonna be the same as the last two days, so quite cloudy. Uh, we won't probably see a Cerro Torre at all and only partial view of Fitzroy but tomorrow they say it's gonna be the same. So tomorrow is our last day in El Chaltén anyway so we just decided to do this hike now. So this path that you can see on the left goes to Mirador de los Condores and Mirador de las Aguilas but we're gonna keep on the right and have 10 kilometers to Loma del Pegue Tumbado. <music> So this is the same table as I showed you on our first day here. So after 3 kilometers, we should get to the crossroad that goes to Laguna Toro and we keep going on the right and after 8 kilometers, we should arrive to Mirador Plegue Tumbado and after 10 kilometers, we should arrive to the hill Loma del Plegue Tumbado. And here you can see it on the map, so we should be able to see Laguna Torre and even Cerro Torre but today it's cloudy day and if you keep going the other way, you should get to Laguna Toro. Uh, for that you need uh, special equipment as I said and I want to do this hike sometimes in the future. As we're looking on maps.me there won't be many streams to fill our bottles for a long time so that's why we're gonna fill our bottles here at the beginning and drink as much as we can. So we see on maps that me that we have 1,100 meters of elevation all the way to Loma del Plegue Tumbado Hill. That's much more than we did to Laguna de los Tres, which was only 780 meters. With a distance of 20 kilometers, this will also be the longest hike we did in Al Chaltén. For the first few kilometers, the path follows through the valley with the stepas or grasslands. And we saw this unusual, interesting big rock on the top of the hill and I have no idea how it got there. So I tried to get up and see if I can push it over the edge. After about half an hour of hiking, we start to see some better view of the snowy mountains. After about 3 kilometers, we still got a view of El Chaltén and soon after the path started to go steep on the right.
and then we spotted this large bird which is either condor or eagle so if there are any bird watchers watching this video comment down below which one it is Andean condor found in the Andes mountains and adjacent Pacific coast of Western South America the Andean condor is the largest flying bird in the world by combined measurement of weight and wingspan as a maximum wingspan of 3.3 meters exceeded only by the wingspan of four seabirds and waterbirds the roughly three and a half meters maximum of the wandering albatross southern royal albatross great white pelican and dalmatian pelican it nests at elevations of up to 5,000 meters, generally on inaccessible rock ledges. One or two eggs are usually laid. It is one of the world's longest living birds, with a lifespan of over 70 years in some cases. Whoa! Now the path started to follow through the area of typical beech trees, when we heard the sound of Magellanic woodpecker. After about an hour of hiking, we got a view of another snowy mountain that we haven't seen before. And this mountain is called Cerro Huemul. And the long distance path that goes through Laguna Toro goes around it and comes back to El Chaltén the other way. Looking at the map, it seems like that this hill in the front is a Loma del Plague Tumbado Peak, which is our final destination. And it seems like the Fitzroy is clearing up a little bit, so maybe we're even gonna see Cerro Torre today. As we are walking through these grasslands, we notice there are some cows here. Uh, we're not sure if these cows are wild or if they belong to somebody, but I think they are wild because El Shaltan is quite far away and there would not be anybody walking all this way to get them here. So I think this area used to be used for animal agriculture before, but since this became a national park, it got prohibited and these cows are just left in the wild here. And looking at this grass, it's nice, green and short, easy for walking. So if you released all the cattle that's raised for meat in the wilderness, you would have a nice grass like this everywhere. And here is a table confirming that these cows are wild. So it says if you meet them, shout loudly. It says don't go close to them. And if you get close to them, let them pass. So I think they're not so aggressive, but I guess some people had bad experiences with some bulls here. And straight after the table, we got to this important crossroad. So on the right, we keep going to Loma del Plague at Tumbado Hill, which is another five kilometers. So we are about halfway there now. And on the left, you go to Laguna Toro, which is another 12 kilometers. And there is also a campsite. And after that, you can keep going for a few more days and make a loop and come back to El Chaltan another way around. And soon after we entered this forest and there was a stream running through so you don't have to worry about getting fresh drinking water on this hike. So 
So you can see the trees in this forest are much bigger and higher and also more dense and I don't think it's because this area receives more rain I think the rain is uh, similar to down there I think it's either because this area contains more streams which holds more water in here or it could be also that they cut the trees down near Al Shaltan for cow grazing but here they didn't cut them So we are walking through this forest for about 2 kilometers and it took us about 40 minutes but we see that it's finishing soon and we're gonna have lunch before it ends because once we get out of the woods it's gonna be too windy to have lunch comfortably. So it's 1 o'clock and 6 minutes and we're just gonna eat, it will take us around half an hour and as you can see behind me the woods finished so after that it's probably much more windy. So. We're gonna eat around here and then continue. And here we are having lunch, so I prepared a sport which I'm a little bit contradicting myself because I'm taking a lightweight uh, sport, but then I bring uh, this heavy lunch, heavy potatoes with some pepper and cauliflower. So next time I would not bring such a heavy lunch, uh, even though it's healthier than what Sanya has. Sanya has some uh, bread with uh, avocado and tomato. So I will just take something like she has or something like burrito because comfort of your back is more important than healthy vegan food. And bread is not such a bad option if you eat it occasionally. Okay, we just finished lunch and it's a quarter to two o'clock and we have about another hour till the, till the top, which is that hill over there. And hopefully we're gonna see something. On this map you can see that there is gonna be a crossroad and on the left we go to the top of the hill Loma del Pegue Tombado and on the right we go to the viewpoint. So you can see the domesticated cows can survive in the wilderness by themselves. So the argument what would we do with all the domesticated animals if people stop eating meat doesn't hold up. Here on the right you can see the Lago Viedma. So it's incredible how the wind makes the weather so much colder. So in the forest we're perfectly comfortable walking with one layer, but here we put all the layers on, we're walking up the steep hill and we're still quite cold. Here we spotted another condor. After about 20 minutes from leaving the forest, we got to another stream, so you don't really have to worry about getting enough water on this hike. Soon after we got to another stream, but what's interesting to me is that there are no plants growing by the river, so it means that the ground is too cold and also too rocky to sustain any plant lives. So as you can see now we put off some of our jackets and weather in Patagonia can be really unpredictable so one moment can be freezing 5 degrees with strong winds and next moment the wind can stop, the sun comes out and can be 15 to 20 degrees. So here you can see Loma del Pegue Tumbado in front of us, it looks quite steep from down here 
and I think Pat goes like this straight up. Now we're walking towards the Loma del Plegue Tumbado viewpoint or Mirador and by now we should be able to see both Fitzroy and Cerro Torre but it's all in the clouds so we are losing hopes tomorrow is our last day so we might not be able to see Cerro Torre till we leave and from this viewpoint we should also be able to see the Laguna Torre where we've been a few days ago when we did the loop of Fitzroy Cerro Torre so check out those videos Alright, so we made it to the viewpoint, Loma del Plegue Tumbado, and we got a view of the Laguna Torre beneath us. Until here, we did the most of the way already. From the Vista Center, it's 8.6 kilometers with 890 meters of elevation. Until Loma del Plegue Tumbado Hill, we have another 800 meters and 220 meters of elevation. So most people finish here as this is pretty much the best place to take pictures of both Cerro Torre and Fitzroy at the same time and from the top of the hill you pretty much see the same view and down here if you look closely you can see a path that goes from Laguna Torre to the viewpoint Maestri where you can see even better view of a Cerro Torre Okay, so we're leaving the viewpoint and I was wondering why they didn't make a path all the way to the lagoon so you can make a nice loop around and I think the main reason is that there is a big river Fitzroy in between so you can't cross that so maybe if they made a bridge there will be a nice loop to make around and now we're just gonna continue to the peak which is around 220 meters of elevation which will take about half an hour. So here in the distance you can see Laguna Capri. From here we are looking on the map we have 600 meters to go with 200 meters of elevation which is really steep. So here you can see again huge lag of Viedma. So even though there is not much rain here in this area, most of it water comes from the melting glaciers. Here you can see how insanely steep this is. It reminds me of a ascent to Tunguragua in Ecuador. So here we're getting some sneak peeks of Fitzroy, but we're hoping it's gonna clear up even more. And if you look closely down here, you can see the path that leads from El Chaten to Laguna Torre. So this is probably the steepest part just before the top, must be over 50% gradient. And this snowy peak on the right that we've seen many times before, it's called Cerro Solo and it's 2,121 meters high. Alright, so it took us about 3 hours to reach the top of Loma del Tegue Tombado, 1520 meters high and we got a view of more mountains on the other side, more glaciers Oh, 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 oh,
So this snowy peak on the left that we saw at the beginning, it's called Cerro Huemul, 2677 meters high and the long loop goes around it. Looking down here we can kind of see how the path of the Huemu loop goes. So before I was showing you the crossroad, so the path goes from there and then connects to the river Rio Tunnel, which is the river that you can see down here. And the path goes along that river until the Laguna Toro, which I think is the lagoon over there where is the campsite. And then from there it continues up across this mountain saddle called Paso del Viento and then goes on the other side of this mountain ridge around the Cerro Huemu and then connects to the Lago Viedma and then from there comes back to El Chalten as I said it takes around 5 days and you need to register for it at the national park office and you need a special equipment for crossing the rivers And here you can see how it looks like the other side of the hill, it looks even steeper than the one we got up. And it really looks like a desert all this area around the Viedma Lake. So 90% of the time it's really windy on this hill, so that's why they build this shelter, so you can hide there and still enjoy the view. So now we're getting clear of your Fitzroy, but if you want the best views of Fitzroy Panorama, you have to go to Laguna de los Tres. But Loma del Piego Tombado is special because you can see both Fitzroy and Cerro Torre at the same time. If there are no clouds, of course. So here if you look really closely you can see El Chalten and we follow this path through the valley around through the woods and then up here and the other day when we went to Laguna de los Tres we followed the path behind those hills there's the Laguna Capri over there and then behind the mountain all the way to Laguna de los Tres and Camp Ponceñot and the next day we continued around through the Laguna Madre and Laguna Ica around this corner all the way here and follow the Rio Fitzroy until Laguna Torre and then we came back the same way until El Chaltan this way so check out those amazing vlogs on my channel especially the first day with amazing views of Fitzroy So looking at these steep walls of Fitzroy and thinking about climbing it and standing on the top seems to me like something out of this world, something really hard to achieve, almost impossible. And I see other people who done the whole Fitzroy Travers like Alex Honnold, like some extraordinary people with a special talent. But it's only because I don't have much experience with mountain climbing and I'm sure if I got more into it and started mountain climbing it would seem much easier and climbing peaks like Fitzroy would not be such a impossible task. And that's why you only should compare yourself to your past self and don't compare yourself to the top people in the field because for many people what you're doing right now is out of this world too.
and it doesn't mean you should be comfortable with where you are and do nothing it means that you should look how much you progressed in past few years and keep improving yourself every single day because one day you will reach your goal be it climbing the Fitzroy or living off your land Sanyo already started to go back the same way as we came from and I just wanted to see how far I can get this way from this side of the hill and it seems like there is a way all the way down and even to the other hills that you can see in the front one of them is called Cerro Nato and maybe you can do even the whole reach and explore more but it's not marked paths I think it's around 4 o'clock when we started descending and I have to catch Sanya who is already down here. And as I'm doing lots of hill running I can explore more and catch Sanya really quickly. So Sanya always used to have a knee pain when going downhill on a long hikes but what seems to help her is doing a lower body workouts with weights like squats etc. So we got down from the top much quicker than we got up there and now I'm gonna explore a little bit more this way to see if there is a way to Laguna Torre but as I said, I don't think there is because there is a river in between. So this is right under the viewpoint and this terrain looks really walkable. So I'm gonna go down a little bit more to see if there is a path going down. So I ran down all the way to this edge here and it seems like the Laguna Torre is not that far away from here but the problem is once you get down there you would have to cross the river because there is no path on this side so it's confirmed there is no path leading down to Laguna Torre because of the river but maybe if they make a bridge across maybe in the future there will be a path here making a really nice loop. So I spent quite some time under the viewpoint exploring there and Sanya is probably further away so I'm gonna just start running and make a shortcut here. And as we are heading down, the Fitzroy started to clear up even more. So if you're coming to El Chaten for a week, there is a good chance you're gonna see Fitzroy. We saw it I think 4 out of 7 days we are here, but we saw Cerro Torre only on the first day we are here and we never saw it since. And here you can see once again the top of Loma del Plague Tumbado, where we've been maybe half an hour ago. So I mentioned this information before in my previous vlogs. So many people don't know that there is actually vitamin B12 found in fresh waters like streams, lakes and rivers. 
So many people think that vegan diet is not adequate because it is lacking in vitamin B12 and it's only found in animal products but B12 is also found in fresh streams like these ones and it's scientifically proven that you can actually get enough vitamin B12 just by drinking fresh water like this. So now we are about to enter the forest and I was thinking this is going to be the last view of Fitzroy because the last time it got in the clouds. So that was the place we were eating and now we have about two more hours still down. So it's about five o'clock right now. Should be back around seven, hopefully. If it's gonna keep going good. Okay, so we are back down at the grasslands and I thought the picture will get in the clouds as it will get later in the day but I was obviously wrong, it got even clearer so just because it's already evening doesn't mean that the picture will be in the clouds And here we are back at the crossroad where you go to Laguna Toro and then you can keep going around the Huemul mountain that you see in the front so I definitely want to come back here to do it one day. It would be such a great world if people didn't exploit animals like cows for food and we would just enjoy seeing them in nature roaming free in the wild. So once you get down to the steppas, the weather is usually really sunny here because it doesn't receive much rain. So this, this kind of hike goes around like this through the woods. I don't know why it didn't just go like this, shortcut. It doesn't seem so steep. Might be because there's some private properties or something that uh, they want to avoid. It's crazy. And here we already see El Shotan and I think we have around 45 minutes to go. In yesterday's walk we are hiking on those cliffs, so we started down here, went on the right under the cliffs and then up around on the top where we got amazing views, so check out that walk. Just before we were going down there was one more crossroad and I went to explore this little path it seems like it's going under the cliffs so we definitely were to check it out maybe there are some cool climbing spots here as well and here you can see River Rio Fitzroy and El Chaltan on the other side And just like that, we are at the beginning where we started. And here we spotted this cute armadillo again, but we saw it much better on our first hike here, 
when we went to Mirador de los Condores. So check out that vlog if you want to see the armadillo better. Right, it's uh, 6.51. We just arrived back to the National Park offices. And uh, so it took us around three hours. I think we went a little bit before four. And uh, yeah, maybe three and a half hours, something like that. So yeah, as expected. Now we have another two kilometers back to our house. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this amazing hike. And tomorrow is our last day in El Chaten. We're gonna do one more hike to the waterfall Corio del Salto. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And as always, stay healthy and stay adventurous.